Succulents need a very free draining soil. That means a soil that can hold moisture to provide nutrients for the plant, but also porous at the same time. To crack the right mixture, one has to go back to where the succulents originated from. Hello there, my name is Liz, a self-confessed succulent addict. Welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. Check out this area. This is like a little bonsai garden of succulents. Most of them came from semi-arid desert. What does that mean? It means that most of these places where these succulents originated from experience a dry and wet season. That means they experience long periods of drought or dry and when it does rain, these places usually get flooded and be underwater for a few days and sometimes even weeks. During the wet, the succulent will take advantage of the abundant water and gorge themselves taking in as much water as they can to sustain them for the coming months of drought. That doesn't mean that they are submerging in water for weeks on end. This is why most of the succulents grow on cliff edges and rocky areas. The slopes on these cliffs provide drainage. The rocky areas have very limited soil and mostly composed of decomposed bits of granite and volcanic rocks. They do get a small amount of decomposed material from leaves and twigs, manure from birds and decomposed animal feathers, bones and dead insects and so on and so forth. Based on all these summations, this is how we figure out the right soil mixture for our succulents. Maybe now you'll understand why I prefer using granite in my soil mix and also the different mixtures. So in this video, I am going to talk about the granite that I'm using. Without sounding like a geology class, granite basically is molten rocks or magma that has come from beneath the surface of the earth. And of course, there's a big cauldron down there melting all the stuff or something's cooking down there. And what happens is there's pressure builds up the heat and whatever that's being melted get pushed through the cracks or the fissures of the ground. And basically the ground, the surface of the earth is sort of cool. So the magma, as it traveling through the cracks, being pushed by the pressure, picks up whatever minerals or um, elements that's in there and bring it all up to the top. And as it goes to the top, it slowly cools down and solidifies or hardens and forms into what we know now is granite. So basically, granite is composed of different elements and different minerals. So don't even start it on talking about rocks because I am gonna get excited and I can see some little jammy stuff in here. So mainly this granite came from an area where in there's a lot of um, different minerals in here. So you've got orthoclase, you've got quartz, uh, you've got um, muscovite or muscovite, pyroxene, biotite, so all sorts of different stuff that's in a granite. And every granite, depending where it came from in different parts of the world, will have different minerals in it. So this one has got pink, which is a lot of pink feldspar or orthoclase in it. This one is a horn blend which is also granite, if it weren't for the fact that it's got a lot of that black stuff, which is, it's not actually black, it's actually green. So it's like really, really dark green. Olive, just about. Okay, so you can see a probably, yeah. So you've got orthoclase and other bits of quartz and all sorts of stuff without doing um, a soil an analysis test. I can't really specifically be specific to tell you exactly what minerals is in this granite, which is actually now a horn blend, because it's mostly horn blend. So, 
Anyway, so this one is a pink granite, and then you have, this is what they call a red granite, but this one is already crushed. See, you do get this from the garden center. This is what they use for driveways uh, and all sorts of stuff. And it also has, even though they crushed it, so basically the granite is not decomposed like this ones I'm gonna talk to you about, the one I'm using. So this one mainly, it could also be uh, decomposed already. So if I just squash this, look. So that's already decomposed as well, but it also has a lot of different minerals on this rock that I can see here. So it's got different composition, but this one is sort of more dark. So when you wash this off, since there's a lot of powdered um, granite already in it, what I would suggest is only using half of this uh, driveway, or should I call this landscaping granite, but it's basically crushed granite. So only use half of the landscaping granite. So I'm trying to fill this one here now. So this one is sort of, I've got more on this right hand side. This is my decomposed granite. And this is the crushed granite. And I'm just trying to fill the way, this is way, way, way heavier, the crushed granite than the decomposed granite. So now that we're gonna talk about decomposed granite, not yet, I'm still gonna introduce you to sand. Is sand and uh, decomposed granites uh, the same? Well, no, they're not. So this is sand. This is the same stuff uh, you find, this is basically silica quartz that you find in the beach or in rivers. So this is, I call this dead. That doesn't do anything. It doesn't uh, absorb or it's not porous. So it's just in small bits, small um, um, grits or grains. Oh, there's a crystal there. Is it a crystal? Oh, it's a little crystal. But anyway, yeah, me and my crystal. But anyway, this one is, um, some people use it for uh, cactus. Yeah, I can actually use it for some species of cactus. But I don't use this for my succulents. So I'm going to be specific now. So for, say, cactus and lithops, you use a different soil mix for that one. So this is just mainly for the leafy succulents. I'm gonna talk about my decomposed granite. So this is not decomposed granite, this is crushed granite. We'll put it aside. So this one as well, okay, this is um, scoria. Scoria, it's got some holes in it, see, look. Those ones, they're not good for succulent. I tried using them on my succulent as a dressing for the top and then uh, mealybugs just found a home for themselves. So the little holes get infested with mealybugs so that's where they hide and then they go in there at night or wherever when you're spraying and then they run back in to the plants when you're not around. So that's their hidey hole, this, this scoria. So don't use scoria. I don't, well at least I don't use scoria. You can use scoria if you want to. You're free to do what you want to do, but me, personally, I don't use scoria. Lithops, I actually use them for lithops, but I crush them, but that's another video. So now, let's talk about the decomposed granite. Oh, hang on, uh, this one is pink rocks here. Okay, I got these pink rocks. This is like blue metal that they painted. So I'm not sure whether I could find some bits that are exposed, okay. Better yet, I'm gonna crack one, okay. Just to see it, it's really hard. Yeah. Okay, there you go. So it's blue metal, so it's road based. This is what they use for uh, making roads. Blue steel. <laughs> no, it's not blue steel, it's a blue rock. So I think they're called uh, scalpings. We call it scalpings. And they just painted it to put as dressings on succulents, which I think is just horrible. Okay, so now this is also decorative sand. This is actually has been cooked up. So I'm just gonna open this up. So white sand like this in this sort of amount doesn't exist in nature. So this is already a man-made sand. Okay, I put it in my hand, you can't really see. So this is man-made sand. So I don't use this on my succulents. I only use it as dressings for uh, my lithops. <laughs> so, We'll put that away now. Okay, so this is my decomposed granite that I use. Now, this 
Decomposed granite, okay, so first of all, decomposed granite, how did decomposed granite happen? Because from something like this solid, how did that decompose? The composition happens through weathering. The granite, when hit by hot and cold, so you've got the sun and the, cold, the cool of the night, what happens is they will contract and expand and then fractures happen so they will crack up slowly in time and also you've got rain and also birds around with the acid in their uh, in their excrement and um, all sorts of stuff animals dying plants decaying on them it forms a certain acid that breaks them down and slowly gets into the holes and cracks and also other minerals it's also mineral reaction that happens that will decompose them or in time so it takes a long time a long long time because before it decomposes or uh, due to weathering also the wind affects it so all these factors uh, result in decomposing granite so this is now a decomposed granite so you can see this one even has some roots so you can see the roots there from the trees that's in the area but see you can see all of that is now broken up so now it will start breaking down and crumbling so this is as a whole you can see that they're all whole whole bits of granite but then decomposing after all of that what I talk about weathering and all the stuff that happens this is what happens they break down see look at that into that delicious delicious <laughs> yummy soil that I use now for my succulent there you go so this is what happens see look at that so all that different colors different minerals all sorts of stuff that's on it so okay Yep, so there's black, there's pink, there's yellow, there's white. So there's all minerals. But this specific decomposed granite that I've got from the area that I'm in, they've already done analysis on it. And it turns out there's 83 different minerals that's in this granite. So this is what I'm giving my succulent. So uh, from this as well they get fertilized through the granite that I use and also the sea mungus that I use with my granite is just sort of something to make me feel a little bit better sort of it's just a pampering but it uh, it still has the seaweed in it the manure has got manure because there's still not enough uh, manure out there so even if I don't use um, see mungus and even if I just take this granite and grow succulents in it it will still grow so hang on a minute speaking of which I better get a succulent that I've been growing on granite so before I show you the plant okay uh, I'll put this away now so you can see the different minerals in it so okay also there you go so that sort of just falls apart and then this one's now it's the same thing so this is a solid piece of granite. So this is actually sort of really, really hard. So this one doesn't, hasn't uh, decomposed that much yet. But if I use my pliers or my tile snip, sorry, pliers, that, see, see what happens there? That shows you that the composition is already starting. Look, it's already happening. So there's water getting in through the cracks and the fissures of the granite now, breaking it all down. Okay. Ooh, there you go look at that so this one's now you can use this so if I just break it all apart like that small bits that can be used now even so like that you can just snipping um, if you can break it down then you can use it for granite so you can use it for your succulent sorry so now this is what happens to crushed granite basically so those are the hard bits of granite that hasn't uh, decomposed yet and they just smash it I don't know how they do the process but then they crush the granite and that's what happens so eventually there you go if this gets crushed in the factory somewhere or in the quarry they probably have a stomping machine that sort of smashes them down and turns them into basically that crushed granite
So there you go. That's, so that's our granite. So now I'm just going to show you now. Sand first and granite. There you go. Sand. They're different. They're not the same. Pebbles as well. Anything that's smooth and rounded and shiny, they're not good for the succulents, but just um, weighing them down. It's just heavy. So it's not porous. So this one, because uh, of the consistency of the granite already decomposed, it can still absorb. It can, uh, water still gets into there and starts breaking it down. And as it breaks down, all the minerals that's in it uh, gets um, given to the roots of your succulent. And that's how they grow and get their colors from. From whatever mineral is present on the granite. So I wonder now, if I break this down, would it actually give me black echeveria? Huh. That would be something I should probably experiment on. Okay, this is called ta -da, ta -da, Soil is Pure Granite Parpasaram and Soil is Pure Granite Parpasaram from Tanu. So this came from Tanu. Oh, this one, by the way, is compliments of Jem. Hello, Jem. Thank you so much for the crushed granite. So she went and bought two bags of crushed granite. I hope you used the elevator and you didn't use the stairs. Uh, so anyway, so she gave me a bag of this crushed granite. So thank you so much, Jem, you beautiful girl. Okay, so this is the crushed granite. So this one, I'm still gonna use this. I'm not gonna get it wasted or waste not want not. So I'm still gonna use this for my other succulents. I'm gonna experiment with it once it all dries up because right now it's just a big bowl of clay. So I'll put it away now. So this one, the Parpasaram was given to me by Tanu. Hey Tanu, thank you so much. Anyway, okay, so this is, uh, this came from the gold fields. I'm not gonna tell you where, but it's somewhere in the gold. No, this is an old <laughs> bottle stopper from old medicine or something. Look at that, I don't know how many, 200 years old? It's probably at least 200 years old, that one. So now I'm gonna tip this out. So I had this growing in here for almost two years. So with nothing, and look at the, I'll show you the condition of the plant first. Of course, it was prettier before when I got it. But then now I have abused it by just putting it in this granite. And I haven't watered it because it was sort of under the shelf. It just gets watered by the rain a little bit, not much. But the pot is really heavy. And I'm going to tip this out now and hang on. Drying leaves. Okay, can't help myself. So... Uh, the plant is ready if it's not getting any nutrients from the soil of course it's gonna suck itself or eat itself up so that's probably what's happening here but anyway I'm gonna tip this out now oh look at that look at that it's all just granite okay wow there you go so look, can you see the roots? So all the roots there, probably not good with my light. So all that hairy stuff and look, look at that. So this poor thing has been living on granite for almost two years. And see the roots? There you go. So, and it hasn't rotted or root rotted on me. Uh, and no mealybug. Are you, do you have mealybug? Let's just inspect. Nothing. How about that? So it doesn't get attacked by mealybug. It doesn't <laughs> rot. And so they're all just drying up. Look at that. So it's just eating itself. And this is what I say. They can live for a very long time if you uh, don't water them. So this is just dry. Just, just, just look at that. Just, just. See, can you see the dust floating in the air? So there you go. There you go. So that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And hope you get an insight into why I use decomposed granite. And I'm trying to do a video of a soil mix without decomposed granite. So I don't know how that's gonna turn out, but then anyway, I'm just gonna cook up something in my head. Of course, I have to research first the different minerals and the rocks available. 
and uh, and what I can do with it. So, I mean, commercially available online. That way you can just buy it online and it's not a problem anymore. Unless someone comes up with a brilliant idea of bagging up this decomposed granite from Canberra and selling it worldwide. <laughs> so we can all grow beautiful and healthy succulents. That is the difference between sand and decomposed granite. Okay, so that's decomposed granite. And look how pretty the decomposed granite is. So that's got, see that? So that, that part there is orthoclase. And the black stuff there is muscovite. And, oh, probably biotite, sorry, biotite. That was biotite. Muscovite is that shiny little, or basically mica, or vermiculite. There you go. So muscovite, vermiculite, all this light. Hang on. Okay, so that's, so that's all different minerals inside or through the granite. Look at that, see? And quartz, I can see quartz, tiny little uh, translucent stuff there. 